my name is Jeff Abel and I'm Vice President of Sales at Heating Green. And today I want to take a video to show you some of the differences between our infrared heaters and other infrared heaters that are available on the marketplace for commercial hot yoga. And for this video I've taken two specific heaters to compare. Namely, uh, on my right or your left is our 1500 watt ceramic circuit based cove heater. And on my left or your right is a carbon fiber based heater uh, that's available through a number of different sellers. I'll start with going into the differences about where they're made, how they're made, and also the specifications of each panel. To start with ours, this 1500 watt panel is made in the US with US components. Physical dimensions are 46 inches by 15 inches and it has a weight of 28 pounds. It's made out of steel and porcelain and aluminum oxide element, and it's really dense. And that is intentional for its thermal mass, which I'll talk about later in the video. A carbon fiber base panel here, uh, it has an output of 650 watts. These are mass produced in China and then imported to North America to rebrand, remarket, and resell to yoga studios. And uh, physical dimensions, it's two feet by four feet, and it weighs 11 pounds. It's really light. And I wanted to also show you the cross sections of each of these panels when they're disassembled. And so, taking the liberty of disassembling a couple of them, um, to be consistent, I'll start with ours. So this is from a smaller unit, it's not the 1500 watt, but just to show you a representative example of what the face of the heater looks like, is that's a porcelain coated steel plate that gets 425 degrees and emits infrared. And that's the part of the heater that's doing the work, it's the face of it. Um, this is a carbon fiber base panel and the part that's closest to me is the element which is this flimsy piece that has the carbon fiber element embedded with it and then it's glued to like this uh, it's a rigid insulation piece and behind that is a really thin gauge sheet of aluminum and that's all held into place by this exterior bezel that surrounds the heater and so just to give you an idea of what they look like on the inside. I'll go ahead and move into the second difference for the two heaters, and that is the a warranty for them. So I'll start with a carbon fiber based one. A carbon fiber based panel typically has a two year warranty. Um, sometimes one year, it just depends on who you buy it from and then what protection they provide, but rarely do they exceed two years for warranty. And if you ever talk to a commercial studio that has carbon fiber based panels and has had one fail, um, they will tell you how onerous and, and arduous the process is to get it replaced. It's not very, very smooth. Our panels have a 10 year warranty and uh, the failure rate on them is extremely low, but if something happens, they are covered under the warranty. And the process for it is very simple. You run what's called a resistance test on the heater to show that it failed and then we send you a new element to replace it so that you're back up and heating. And we cover the cost for returning the element, the faulty part, and then also the shipping cost we provide for the uh, replacement part. So I'll move into the third difference, which is the period of time that you can run the panel for. Carbon fiber base panels have a limitation of a two hour runtime before they need to cool down. And this is explicitly called out in their instructions that they need to cool for 15 minutes every two hours, otherwise it will adversely impact the panel. And the reason for this, uh, well, one of the reasons is that they were not engineered for yoga. These were engineered for far infrared saunas. And most people are never in a sauna for more than two hours. And these work very, very well for saunas, but they don't work well for yoga. And that's something I'll, I'll talk about next. But um, our panels can be run 24 seven. So you can run them indefinitely if, if you wanted to, but um, it'd be a waste of electricity, but it will not adversely impact the panel to run them or to cycle them on and off as much as you choose. And one thing I'll note too, just on while we're on this topic is that a studio, a hot yoga studio never warms up instantaneously. So you have to budget a certain amount of time for the warm up time. So if you can imagine taking an hour, hour plus to warm up your studio from 70 to 95 degrees for vinyasa, for example, that leaves you another hour to run the panel before you have to cool it again. Versus these, again, you could have back-to-back -back classes, keep running the panels, it's not gonna hurt them. And that'll lead into the fourth difference I wanna talk about, which is the intensity. This 
goes back to why these work well for saunas, but not for yoga. Um, and first, I'll describe how infrared works so that you can better understand the, the principle behind these two. The warmth that you feel from an infrared heater or the physiological effect of that heat is directly correlated to how hot the surface of the heater is and how far away you are from it. If you've ever been in front of a campfire or fireplace or wood stove, those are all very, very strong infrared or radiant heaters. And if you're a few feet from the fire, it feels really intense and probably pretty nice. If you back away five or 10 feet from it, you barely feel the heat anymore because it decreases at an exponential rate. The further away you get from it, that intensity substantially decreases. With a panel like this, the temperature that the surface of the carbon fiber base panel reaches is about 180 to 200 degrees. And when they're in a sauna and they're about six inches away from you, it feels really, really nice. But when you put this up 10 feet on your ceiling and you put a yoga mat underneath it, the intensity that you feel from 10 feet away is negligible. It's not very strong. Our panels reach over 425 degrees Fahrenheit, over twice as hot as a carbon fiber based panel. And again, what that translates to is that it will create a stronger intensity in terms of the warmth that you feel from the panel. So our panels as a ballpark, they add about five to 10 degrees in warmth above what the air temperature reads. If your thermostat reads 95 degrees on the wall, the warmth that you feel when you're underneath an infrared heater is closer to about 100 to 105. And again, with any infrared heater, the further away you get from it, the less intense it's going to feel. And that's just universal. So that really covers the basics of intensity, but I can always explain in more detail if you're curious. The next part I wanna talk about is how the heaters work when they're thermostatically controlled. So when you're turning them to a certain temperature and then trying to maintain that temperature for a hot class. When you hook up a thermostat to infrared panels, the way that the system works is that those heaters will turn on or they'll have power directed to the panel until they hit the desired temperature. And I'm gonna use 95 degrees, which is very common for vinyasa power flow for yoga. Once it hits 95, the power cuts, because otherwise it goes to 100 degrees and it would be hotter than you want it to be. So um, once that power cuts, there's no more heat coming into the room and the room gradually cools to say 94 degrees and then the power kicks back on to the panel. And it'll go through these iterations of cycling on and off, on and off, on and off to maintain a consistent temperature in a room. Where the difference lies between a carbon fiber panel and our infrared panels comes down to thermal mass. In layman's terms, just the, the density and the, the heaviness of the heater. Something that is really, really heavy holds its heat longer or it takes longer to cool down once it's hot. What this means, I'll start with the carbon fiber based panel, is that these cool fairly quickly within about five minutes. So just like a light switch, when you turn the light off, it goes from light to dark. These, when the power cuts, the intensity of the infrared falls off very rapidly. Our panels take about 20 minutes to cool. When the power cuts to them, they're going to slowly decrease in temperature until it hits 94 and then the power kicks back onto them and it'll warm up again and it'll go through those cycles and it's a much smoother cycle with ours than something that cools very rapidly which is much more of a staccato up and down type motions. Much better consistency uh, is what I'm getting at. The next part that I wanna talk about is the installation process for each of these panels. Now the electrical connections on the back are the same. It takes the same gauge wire and they're very similar in terms of the amount of time that it takes to affix a panel to your ceiling. However, carbon fiber based panels are a lot more expensive to install. You might say, well, why? If they're the same uh, principle of how they attach. The reason is you need a lot more of these to be able to get to a desired temperature. The measuring stick for how hot your studio will reach is not based on the quantity of panels. It's based on the total wattage or the output of all the heat combined that's pouring into your studio. When you have a panel like ours that is higher wattage, it means you need fewer panels to be able to reach that finish line of what it will take to get to a hot yoga temperature. Because our panels are 1500 watts and the carbon fiber based ones are 650, ours are over twice as powerful and it takes less than half of them 
to get the same net result for air temperature, meaning that your contractor or electrician has a lot less stuff that they would have to hook up in your ceiling, which will usually save you as a ballpark about $1,000 to $1,500 for an average commercial studio that has 20 to 30 mats roughly. So that leads me to the, the last difference that I wanna to touch on, which is regarding the voltage of the panels. All electric based panels are made to a specific voltage. You need to run that specific voltage to them in order to get their desired output of 650 watts for this or 1500 watts for this. If you run a different voltage to them, then you either underpower the panel or you overpower it and both of those are not good. Carbon fiber based panels are mass produced in China and they are made at a voltage of 240 volts. 240 volts is what you have, for example, at your house for a clothes dryer or an electric stove or a hot tub or a sauna or anything else that takes usually more power is run at 240 volts. Most commercial facilities are not 240. They're 208 volt three phase, which is a different type of voltage and a different type of power. Now, what happens when you run 208 volts at the commercial building to a 240 volt panel is that you get roughly about 80% of its output, or you lose about 20% of that output. So that means you're not getting as much heat out of the heater that you just bought. Our panels are manufactured to order to match the voltage that's in your electrical panel. So if you're at 208 volts, we will manufacture them at 208 volts, matching it apples to apples, and that gives you 100% output of the heater. Now, if you're 240, if you happen to be 240, we would make it at 240, of course. And there's a couple other ones like 277 volt and 220 for international. We will make them and we can make them at any voltage to specifically match your studio. That's a pretty high level overview of the differences between these two panels. And I haven't touched on everything, but I just wanted to give you really this high overview. I'll also just mention that you know, our panels, they're in roughly a little over 1300 studios in over 30 countries. And to the best of my knowledge, they're the most widely used for hot yoga in the world. So they're a very tried and true panel that are, uh, work extremely well for their intended purpose. Carbon fiber based panels, again, to the best of my knowledge, they're in around 300 to 350 studios. They are used, but they're not to the same level and they certainly don't create the same ambiance for heat. So appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out and we'll see you on the next video.